Hey, welcome to The Feast Life, where we empower you, the modern homeschool mom, to create a life in homeschool you love. I'm Julie Ross, the creator of the award-winning curriculum, A Gentle Feast, a homeschool veteran of over 20 years, and a certified Christian life coach. Charlotte Mason said, life should be all living, not a mere tedious passing of time. So on this show, we seek to savor the feast of life. So go get your favorite beverage and pull up a chair. You're welcome at this table. Hey everyone, welcome to The Feast Life. I'm your host, Julie Ross, and I'm here today with Jennifer Bro, who is the owner of JB Travel Pros. And today we're going to be talking about traveling with neurodivergent children. And this is such an important topic. And I was so excited when you reached out because I feel like I didn't even know that this was a thing that people talked about. But I'm so glad there are tools and resources because I know that so many of my listeners have children that fit in that category. And it can seem very daunting to want to take on traveling. Before we dive in, can you just tell everyone a little bit about yourself and how you got into this niche? Oh, thank you, Julie. I um, I am retired from the Army 29 years. And when we adopted our first child, he was nine months old. And he was, he fools you into thinking that you could have a second child because he traveled easily. He ate everything. He went to bed perfectly at night. And then when we adopted our second child, he was four and a half years old, none, but he, it did not go easy at all. It was ugly. Let me just tell you, it was ugly, but we persevered and um, both children do have diagnoses, but we kept going and we kept trying because we love to travel. Yeah. We absolutely want to give that gift to our kids of seeing the world and understanding other cultures and even just other parts of the United States. Yeah. So we just kept at it. And then when I retired from the military, I opened up my little business and, and then decided I want to share this gift with others to let them know that travel is possible. And so that's when, after I had my business for years and tried and tried and figured out some tips for folks that I wrote a book to help folks. That's great. Okay. I just want to say like kudos because traveling with a nine month old and a four year old, is just hard no matter what. <laughs> so, oh girl, listen to right? it. Well, this is no, listen, we didn't travel with him when, when we, when he was nine months old, we did travel, but we didn't adopt our four and a half until our eldest was almost seven. Okay, no, okay. we thought we were just going to have one child. I was like one and done. We're good. And then we just had this calling in our heart. We're like, I, I think we could have another child in yeah. our life. Yeah. 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 And he just happened to be four and a half when we brought him home. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what oh, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's amazing. Let's talk about that. Oh, no. okay. <laughs> but Jacob was nine months old. We did travel a lot with him every month. We because he was our first kid. And yeah. so the first grands, the yeah. first on, <laughs> on both sides. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. So tell me a little bit about your book and how it can help families that are trying to travel. Yeah. So you do think it's impossible, especially after our little Noah, when he screamed for an hour and a half, that first hotel that we went to with him, with him, I was just like, what is this? Wow. Oh my God, this is a nightmare. And what is he experiencing? Because for some, for a, a little one, and he was nonverbal, right? So he couldn't yeah. really tell us. Even now, I don't think he could communicate he just sp speaks non-stop now so let me just say <laughs> that he has made up for time yeah. but I don't know if he has the words to express um what it is he's feeling but mm -hmm. he travels like a pro he still has anxiety that first or second night but the hot mess express coming through and then we had to get up the next day and do it again it was a nightmare. It wasn't easy, but we kept doing it over and over until it got better. And then we tried longer trips. Then we tried cruises. And so what my book does is through every modality, whether it's a road trip, whether it's a land package, like going to Disney or Universal, whether it is going on a cruise or an all-inclusive, it walks you through every experience like that and some tips we talk about a social story. We talk about our favorite fidgets um, for our, for even for our kids sitting in church, we, we have to have fidgets. We have to have paper. And my eldest, he'll be 17 in two months. You would, it still needs those things to help focus yeah. to, and church is an hour for us, maybe an hour and five minutes, but they still need those, those tools to be successful in life. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. Okay. So let's dive into some of these kind of different kinds of trips and different kinds of tips. Social story. So what is that? So we learned about this social story being in the military. We were moving from Virginia to San Antonio and then San Antonio to Florida. And one of his therapists created this book. I use the term loosely book. It was basically a word document and it took his picture and where he was living and incorporated the new school that he was going to go to, a new house that we were going to live in, pictures of the neighborhood or the neighborhood pool. So things that he was going to experience to help reduce his anxiety, to give him an idea of what he was going to experience. Mm -hmm. So they always, our kids always have, well, what does this look like? Well, who is that going to be? Who's my new bus driver going to be? What is my new teacher's name? And we may not have all of those questions, sure. but we can show you, you are going to have a bedroom. You are going to have a home. This is what your home is going to look like. This is what the base is going to look like. And there's so much more information now on the internet than there was even 10 years ago. But some of those things we could look up or take pictures of and incorporate. So you have that information if you're moving or your new school. Imagine putting that together for a vacation. You're going to go by airplane. This is who's going with you. These are things that are comfort items for you. Now, mine aren't stuffed animals. They like a book or they like their little Lego set. Yeah. Um, this is you packing your suitcase. This is the resort. We're going to go buy a van to get to the resort. And once we're at the resort, these are some things that you're going to have. This is what your room looks like. Because you can get a picture off the internet now and put that in there. And now our kids have traveled enough that they know that when they get to the Tampa airport, they actually go by train. It's a little yeah. tram, right? right. Every, know, but they, every airport has something different. I feel right. like I do that for me sometimes when I'm traveling. <laughs> Where's the baggage claim? Yeah, exactly. You could even take it a step farther. We always thrive on routine for our kids. Our kids are autistic and they need that routine. We have verbal prompts. We have timers on our phones timers on the uh, microwave. I also think it's helpful to have a vacation routine. I know some people are like, it's vacation. Woohoo. Yeah. <laughs> but we need, yeah. But we all have a routine for our vacation. You could even incorporate that in your social story if you think that is helpful. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love the concept because just in general, I feel like kids, when my kids were little, I'd be like, okay, we're going to go to the grocery store. And this is the aisle we're going to come to first. And I would prepare them. This is what's going to happen because then they're not like, can I have candy and all this stuff? It was like yes. 30 seconds of like, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to say no. If you do this it prepares their minds for what's ahead. And I just think that's so valuable. Yes. I'm not kidding. Like when I plan out trips for myself, I don't do the pictures. But I have the itinerary down yes. every, because it's so hard to manage, especially with lots of kids. So I think something like yeah. that was so valuable. I love that idea of creating like a little book or just pictures of this is what's going to happen on our trip. I think that'd be so valuable for just pretty much every child. Talk a little bit about what you mean by like routines on a trip. I, we live by routine probably during the school year. I remember listening to one of your podcasts and making up time to have the kids do the chores, have the, so I think it's vitally important that the kids know what to expect while they're on vacation. We know that we're going to get it. We like to lounge a little bit. We're not going to run into our eating. Although our youngest who has severe ADHD, he's hungry right away. Probably he didn't eat much at dinner because he's very busy. Yep. So we watch our little cartoons. We lounge in our pajamas. That's a thing that we don't get to do during the school year. Then we get on our bathing suits. We go to breakfast. We do that every day. Then we're going to go hit up the pool. And we'll swim for a little bit. We'll do our handstand contests at our last resort that we just tried. They had the lar one of the largest man-made lagoons. And so they had kayaks there. They had paddle boarding. And you're not battling the ocean, right? So I'm not very gifted at that. But hey, there's no waves. I can try that. Awesome. And so, right? So we did that. So that's a routine that they know. After lunch, we're going to go have a little bit of tech time, maybe book reading, lounging around, maybe watching some cartoons. Then we will take a break in the afternoon and go to the coffee shop, get some hot chocolate, get some ice cream or a cookie. And then we'll come back, maybe play some games. I always take Uno with us. 
we have five different types of Uno games because <laughs> those, <laughs> I'm telling you, Minecraft Uno, Wild I just, bought, Uno. I just bought Barbie Uno. I'm sure that's shocking. If you can exactly, tell. exactly. We have Emoji Uno, Minecraft, and they pack well and they're lightweight. And you're not always on your tech. I know even during this. Taco my Cat. Have you seen the game Taco Cat Goat Cheese Pizza? Yes. Yes. <laughs> card game is so fun. Yes. And they're lightweight, right? So it doesn't take up much room or weight in your bag. And then, and then we always go to dinner, usually about the same times between 6, 6.30, come back, watch some cartoons, no tech then, go to bed. Yeah, we allow them to stay, stay up later, 9, 9.30, and then off to bed. Yeah, I love that because it's a great, it feels comforting for kids to have those routines. And then it also, but like you're doing a combination of like physical activities, like we're out on the lagoon, we're in the pool. Yeah. We're doing handstands, but okay, then we're having like some downtime because right. like my kids with some of their sensory stuff, like when we're on vacation, they get so overloaded that quite honestly, even myself too, especially with places like Disney and stuff. It's like at three o'clock every day, we'll oh. go back to the hotel and just chill with nothing like silence. <laughs> so we go back at night for dinner and do the fireworks and stuff because I was done. I was like, I, I can't do any more sensory stuff. Like I have to be over it. So I imagine for kids. Uh, especially neurodivergent children, they need to have that built-in downtime routine. They do. Not they to go. So yeah. even a Disney trip, when we went to Disney, we took a complete day off and we made use of the Disney pool. And it seemed like we were still doing Disney yep. because yep. They're, it's shaped like Mickey Mouse head, yep. right? Did the same and thing. You still do the gift shop at the hotel versus trying to buy all that stuff on yeah. at the park because then you're loading this or you could have it sent back. But buy it at the gift shop so they can enjoy it in the room, mm -hmm. go to the pool, and you're not rushing around. And take a day in them if you can, because we did like a five day or a six day. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you do two parks, <laughs> a day off, yeah. one or two parks, day off, come home or come home the next day. Yeah. And take yeah. that day off because it is a lot of overload. It is it's, a lot of overload. Yeah. And I recommend going first thing in the morning. One, it's cooler in Florida. It's cray over here. And then <laughs> by one or two, you're done. Yeah. Right. And then come back, rest, or swim in the pool and get, get cooled down. Take a nap. The kids yeah. won't take a nap, but maybe <laughs> a nap. I'm taking a nap. I'm taking a nap. It could be by the yeah. pool if your kids are old. <laughs> <laughs> right? Do the lazy river if you're at one of the pools that have a lazy river. I'm all about the lazy river. Do you have any tips for being in Disney? Yeah, there is a program that you can sign up for. I know if you have autistic children, there are different lines for that that you can sign up for. And also, so I would get into that program. I also think it's a little bit worth it to get, if you're a Star Wars fan, do a behind the scenes type thing. So save a little bit extra. I'm working, I'm doing a special event here in Tampa about how to plan your dream vacation. And I have a financial coach doing that. So if you can, um, set, uh, if you know how much that vacation yeah, is going to yeah. be, set aside money for that and plan for a little bit extra. Same if you're going to like on a cruise or something, I try to get, now you can sign up for the special needs and then you don't have to be in that crowd to check in. Oh, you check in separately and you're escorted on. Oh, Same wow. with being escorted off. So they let their sweet people go first. Yeah. But then you can go after that in between the general population. Yeah. yeah. Not like I'm in prison, but before the general <laughs> population, you can go on. Or if you want to go, go with a suite because then you're in a separate restaurant. You are, don't have as many people. You have a butler to reserve your seat so you don't have to stand in that line. Yeah. So again, go off off especially if you're homeschooled go off season like a shoulder season that's one of the best so, things about homeschooling is traveling when nobody yeah. else is. <laughs> yes so when my son was in a charter when my um son was in a charter school they had a fall break i was like what is this and we went on fall break it was the best and we got huge discounts like half the price wow. for a suite yes wow that's awesome. Yeah. And we got to be right up front. We didn't have to stand in line. We came in 10 minutes before the show. It was the best thing for our kids and for us. Yeah. I feel like my husband walked paces as much. I don't know. I don't know what it is. 
Then he's getting older. I'm not sure. <laughs> I have to watch him too. But <laughs> I'm the only one in line. I don't know. Yeah, but shoulder great. season is the best, especially for our homeschool families, because you don't have to go during peak seasons. You can go and then take advantage of those prices. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about traveling, um, whatever you think luxury is. But I love that suite because then they're doing all of that, um, standing in line for you, reserving those spots going ahead of time. You're not in with the general population, but if you can't do that, then sign up for these, the special needs lines because okay. they have a separate waiting line for you. They take you on separately. And that's what I highly recommend. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. I didn't know that Disney and or cruises had that option. So that's yes. Like, you know. mm -hmm. What about some other, so we talked about Disney cruise. Are there other specific like destinations or modes of travel that you would recommend for special needs families? Okay. So if you are into sandals and beaches, beaches has an autism program as well. Okay. So they are autism special needs friendly. It's called beaches. Yeah. So have you ever heard of sandals? It's yeah. usually yeah. for yeah. honeymooners. Yeah. Their family right. property is called beaches. Okay. I didn't know that. Yes. So We're they gonna... have, yeah. So write that down. Yeah, And they have them in certain uh, Caribbean islands as well. Sometimes they're co-located with uh, Sandals Properties. Yeah. So they have, uh, there's some training for us travel agents, but they have accommodations as well. Okay. So you're seeing more and more more resorts come online with that mm -hmm. you're seeing so not just beaches but others just I just have to do the research for what it is and what exactly a an individual needs mm -hmm. what their needs are because sometimes it's not autism sometimes it's gluten free right, right. so I have a client right now she's vegetarian and her family they're vegetarian so I had to and they wanted to cruise so you have to look up what is the best cruise line because they wanted to cruise yeah. and some are just adults only so you yeah. have to look for family or adults only yeah. or if they're diabetic how does that how does that what are the accommodations yeah. I've even gotten uh, hospital beds because I've had some older clients that have severe COPD that they don't lie in a regular bed anymore so how can we accommodate that for individuals mm -hmm. and cruise lines will accommodate that so if you, you have individuals that uh, don't can't sleep in a regular bed yeah. that they have a um, variety of other medical needs too. There's yeah. Yeah. So if they have oxygen, if they can't sleep in a, they need a hospital bed that don't, I just say ask first versus just ruling out. I can't do that mm -hmm. because you, there are more and more accommodations every day and more people lobbying and pushing and trying to break down that door for our, our community. Mm -hmm. And so don't let, don't say don't, or I can't first let's investigate for you and push for you and advocate for you. Yeah, that's great. Now, do, did you guys do mostly just kind of family trips or did you do any like group trips with other families that also yes. have people that they could relate to? Cause that's, it's hard sometimes when you're on vacation and you're like, we're the odd family out, like we're sticking out at the pool. Yeah. Everyone's like, what's going on? <laughs> Listen, I've seen my husband skip with my youngest son because he's skipping. So why not? We'll skip. And then all of a sudden my son does a somersault. My husband didn't do a somersault, but <laughs> we are, we're unique. And sometimes we own that. There are group trips. I have not done a group trip, but I know that there are some travel agencies that do specialize in group trips. I'm just now coming around to group trips now. Um, but there are some agencies that do specialize in it. There's certain cruise lines that are better at handling. Should I say I've traveled without letting them know that I'm a travel agent okay. so I can see yeah. how do they, what is their, I don't want to, I don't know if I say compassion or what are their, how do they treat us? Right. What right. are their uh, capacity going. to, no. uh, handle and, uh, accommodations, yeah. And so some weren't so good and some are fabulous. Do you, would you be willing to share some of the fabulous ones? <laughs> <laughs> so I will say bar none, if you have any special needs, I would highly uh, recommend Royal Caribbean. Mm -hmm. 
their whole entire staff, not just their kids camp or their teens camp, but their entire staff. I remember my son wanting to go into their surf simulator. He really wanted to try it. And uh, both my kids are Asian and uh, they just said, oh, I don't think he speaks English first. Don't assume. Yeah. But second, I went up there. I'm like, he he has autism and he's, oh, okay. And so he just said it a different way where my son understood. And then he stayed with them for about 10 minutes until he was able to stay on his board. Okay. And yeah, it was so like, it makes, it still touches my heart that they really worked with him so that he was able to conquer that. Yeah. And um, so it's not just it stays in the camp, but the entire staff yeah, it, uh, on the whole ship and their whole fleet of ships, because we've sailed on a lot of their ships are aware of and um, try to approach you in different ways so that your kid, not only you, but your child, mm -hmm. can, they can communicate with your child as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. That's really good to know. We'll put that in the notes for sure. One of the most daunting parts about traveling with children, period, is yeah. getting there. So do you have any tips for the long car ride or the long plane ride? Today's episode is brought to you by A Gentle Feast. A Gentle Feast offers a complete living books curriculum, an award-winning early reading program, and more tools to equip you to apply Charlotte Mason's timeless philosophy into your modern homeschool. Go to agentlefeast.com to check it out. Smooth and easy days are closer than you think. Yes, yeah, so I do have that. First, I would just say start acclimating not only your kids, but you. So I always just say start. And this is my recommendation for anybody that's just starting off is to go an hour and a half away one overnight in a hotel because it's brand new. It might be brand new to you or your family. So just start. And this is how I would start. I would say, grab a couple bags of microwave popcorn, the drinks that you allow your family to drink for this special occasion, whether it's drink boxes, or maybe you allow them to have pop. So whatever you call it. And uh, maybe your favorite dessert dessert, some cookies, or we always have fun food Friday. So that's, we eat healthy during the week and we have movie night on Friday and uh, find a hotel that has a pool, get a 99 cent blow up beach ball. And if you really want to go wild, uh, we get these things that look like octopus that are like, have a little sinker and you have to oh, yeah. go to the bottom of the pool. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Most pools are three foot or four foot at a hotel. So check in around three or four. That's when they allow you to check in. Now, allow your kids to bring one pillow and maybe a little blanket, comfort blanket, and co one comfort item. That's it. So go check in and then go immediately to the pool. Don't get let anybody get comfortable in that room. You'll do that later. And okay. go to the pool and play some old school games. If your kids can't swim, maybe get them some swimmies or have a splashing contest with your legs on the edge of the pool. Play Marco Polo, back the um, beach ball back and forth, or sit on the steps and have some splashing contests with your arms or your legs. Have, oh, who has the biggest cannonball? Have some swimming contests. I really believe in uh, pool water safety. Yeah, so yeah. should, um, there's some grants around in, uh, in our area. There are maybe your area, you can do that later. Find a grant to get some swimming lessons for your kids. Handstand contests, uh, diving to get that uh, thing. Uh, count yeah. up how many points kids get. So do that for a couple hours, get them nice and tired. Yeah. <laughs> then go to your room, get into your pajamas and order a pizza to be delivered. You're not cooking. This is your vacation night. Eat the pizza, drink the drinks that you have, eat the cookies or whatever dessert that you had. Pop your microwave popcorn and find a movie on the um, TV because they always have something, HBO, whatever. And either pull out the pull away sofa, or sit on the floor, sit on the couch and be in the moment with your kids mm. Then go to sleep, whatever sleep time is, get up the next morning, make sure it includes breakfast and then rehash and remake those memories. What was your favorite part of last night? What was in the pool? What did you like about the movie? Oh, I liked when he tripped and fell on that banana or whatever it was. What yeah. did you like about the pizza? Okay. 
Now, if you have some sensory issues, I recommend asking for a room at the back of the hotel, bring a plug-in that you use maybe from home. We have some of those. It's very small, a noisemaker. It's like white noise. Girl, I can't travel without that thing. I love that thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite I hate those things but my <laughs> husband and my oldest son they love, love those things they <laughs> love them I love them don't go to breakfast at, uh, on the weekends go down around nine if you go at 9 15 9 30 they're not going to restock the waffle mix or anything so go down 8 30 or 9 okay so make sure you get there so you can have enough time for refills Hmm. When that becomes, and, and go an hour and a half away, if you go 10 minutes, you're likely to go back home because it's not good. Yeah. When that becomes successful for you, then do two nights or three nights or go a little bit away. That yeah. gets you comfortable, your kids comfortable and happy. Because I already told nice. you the first night that we went away, my son screamed for an hour and a half and it was too late. I had to keep going on my trip and he did it again the next night. <laughs> so it yeah. was already too late. Yeah. Yeah. It was, we were in the trip. We yeah. had to go. It There's was too late for us. the point of no return, people. <laughs> <laughs> we already pressed launch. Yeah. So don't be like us and get comfortable with that. Mm, that's really then good. you okay. can start doing longer trips or going to Universal or the Great Smoky Mountains or whatever it is that you love or you want to try. Mm -hmm. Then you're ready. Yeah. But get comfortable doing that. Yeah, yeah, that's first. great. That's great. No, that's super good advice. It's really funny. I'm just still dying about the white noise machine because so last week I took my kids. We did a five-day whitewater rafting camping trip. Okay. Um, and it was How are you going to do that on your camping trip? It has batteries. <laughs> So I brought, I brought my white noise machine and everybody's like in their tent and I turned my white noise machine on. People are like... Is it the ocean? What is that? <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. Do you guys want me to turn it off? They're like, no, it's fine. Because everybody can hear it because like, we're all next to You're in a tent. Yeah. We weren't all in the same tent. So that was nice. It was, But yeah. it was a group trip, which is really yeah. cool. And it was mostly all homeschool families and mostly teenagers. So it was really cool. That, and that's why I asked about the group trips because yeah. we've never done anything like that before. And I was like, oh, this is really cool to actually have other children that are around the same Yes. Time that they can make friends with and do these like tasks with. But I was just laughing because I love my white machine that much that I had to bring it in a tent. In but, a tent. but I said, great. I said, great. You got to do what you got to do to sleep well. That's um, right. What about any tips for like airplanes? Even with my kids, I feel like it's still, <laughs> airplanes are just very hard. Because so, you never know what you're going to get. Like we, when we flew back from that Utah trip. Yeah. The plane that we took from Chicago home had no Wi-Fi, no movies, no nothing. Oh my God. And, and with the time changes, we hadn't ate lunch. We hadn't ate dinner. And we got one thing of cookies and water. They didn't even have soda. I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. So I always plan to bring water on with me. So we, one, I'm always thirsty. Mm -hmm. Two, I always you bring tell, I think I've had. Yeah. So that's why I've had my. Soul, yeah. 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 I'm always thirsty. Um, <laughs> so I always have some water or some soda with me. I always bring a snack on with me, even if we're whatever, wherever we're at, Costa Rica, Mexico, I always grab a snack. So that occupies the kids. I always have a card game with me in my bag. And I always have paper so we can play tic-tac-toe or something. Some old school games that you can also do. I do this for when we're standing in line mostly is I play the thumb wrestle. I play odds, evens, rock, paper, scissor. It gets old if you're on a plane, but standing <laughs> in line does the trick. Standing in line, it does the trick. I even started this. I created this one. Our last trip was a sword fight with two of our fingers. We were just sword fighting. I don't even know how that came to me. I'm like, we need to do something different. Creative like, moments when you have to, right? <laughs> yes. Who can stand on one foot the longest? So I do that. Uh, I spy works in a line, especially if you have to go through immigration. Yes. I was going to ask you if there's anything special in terms of like international travel. So for international travel, at least leaving the U, coming back into the U.S. and leaving, I have done the global entry because it includes TSA pre-check. And if you're traveling twice, it's paid for itself. Yeah. TSA project is literally every time I go to the airport, I'm like, that was the best money I ever spent in my whole life. Yes. <laughs> like, and bringing and all the kids with me, I, don't, I didn't even pay for them, but I paid for myself and they're included until they're 17. Yeah. I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> it's 
fabulous. And none of that shoe thing. And <laughs> I forgot one time to, I guess it was messed up on my ticket coming back home. We, my husband, I had to go to a funeral. So I took my oldest and he had it. I didn't. And I got kicked out and had to go to the, I was like, Get on your sad face. Yeah. <laughs> like a walk of shame. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. Yes. So did you have to do anything to like help prepare your kids for airplanes or were they just like cool with it? Oh, this is like being in a car. So Jacob had been flying. We had to bring him from Korea at nine months old. And he was actually a couple pounds heavier and longer than he should have been in that baby bassinet. But listen, we squeezed, we pushed him in there because no way this 22 pound kid was going to lay on my lap. Right. So he had been flying for forever, but Noah was quite different. And that's before we found out he was severe ADHD. He had never really even been in a car. So oh, wow. we got fussed at from the get go about him sitting and not touching buttons and so I was just talking with a mom about how she prepared her eight-year-old to go on an airplane about the seat belts, about getting on the plane, about what that looks like. So again, I think videos would help with that. And maybe even that social story would come back in about preparing. But I really think YouTube has everything. So I think I'm going to come through, I'm going to come through YouTube now and find like one of the best videos. And when I'm preparing my clients, I'm going to find the best one and send them that link. That's what I'm going to do for them. That's what they use me for. So I'm going to find the very best one for them. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, no, that's super helpful. I just, again, it's just thinking through all the things that like are so different. It can scare adults, right? Like They are. You think about <laughs> it, you shut that door and it's <laughs> fine. And if you're claustrophobic, think about being claustrophobic or you have to keep your seatbelt on. You cannot move around. Or even just to uh, know that. Maybe. Yeah. If you never flew before, you wouldn't know that you can't just get up and do whatever you want. No, hey, I'm this is it. I'm here and I can dance around or yeah, right. Yeah, right. it's I want to touch the knobs or yeah. the that kid was <laughs> fascinated with the bathroom. So in the two hour <laughs> flight, you five times. That's like a whole nother lesson right there on how to use the right. bathroom. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, the flusher and it makes a huge sucking noise. You <laughs> yeah. don't think that you're gonna get sucked in. I mean, think about that. Yes. Yeah, it, it is. It's a whole different world here for sure. Um, right. Do you communicate like with the people on the plane or at the hotels or things like that? Like when you're traveling with your kids, Hey, this is what's going on. Just, we want you to yes. be there. Okay. I do. Cause I want everybody to be prepared because I want my um, children. I'm not shy about it. I've never been shy about it with my kids because I did never, I never wanted it to be used as a weapon against them. I don't know why that is. I just feel, I just felt like kids would be cruel. Initially, my son would say that he had blue eyes like me. And I'm like, are you sure? Because we would practice. He had low muscle tone in his face. So he was drooling even at five years old. So we would work on making silly faces in the mirror. And then I would talk about his eyes and his smile. And so I would be very upfront that you're adopted and that you have autism and uh, I just didn't want it to be a weapon. Oh. And he doesn't advocate for himself, but he does advocate it's for hard. his brother. Oh, that's yeah, it is hard, but he advocates for his brother, which is amazing. Yeah, that is so great. he's always been about helping others. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any tips for parents or recommendations on how to communicate that to the different people that you're traveling with or working with at different places? So I know that going ahead on a cruise ship I would fill out a form, like a special needs form. And I would say, hey, my kids are this old. If they had dietary restrictions, you would want to include that. We need this kind of refrigerator or we need this. My kids have autism. They were sensory seeking. So I really need some heavy blankets or these kind of pillows. Uh, if you have a room that doesn't have artwork, usually they all have artwork because it's all the same. <laughs> They, right. it's, you know, it's all the same decorations. I really need somebody that we don't like spices or something like that. When I get on property, we usually have a butler. So I tell them, this is what I need. This is what I don't need. They yeah. understand, but just tell them one thing at a time. Yeah. Yeah. They're not stupid. They're yeah. not slow. Yeah. Just tell them one thing at a time so they can understand you. 
Yeah, no, that's great. That's really good advice. This has been super helpful. I know it's going to help so many parents and we'll put a link to your book in our, um, Oh, thank you. and then you have a freebie to give everybody. What's that? Yes. So I have my ultimate top 10 travel tips. I just thought that sounded fun. So I, I like alliteration, but inside that I have a two page packing list. So it doesn't mean take everything with you, but it gives you a guide more or less of things that you might want to take. And then I dedicate, I, I write a blog every week and the last blog of every month I dedicate to those that have special needs. Okay, cool. That's great. So if you want to go to New York City, if you want to go to Miami, there's some special organizations that help. That's yeah. great. Yeah, that's a great resource. Yeah, we'll definitely share that with everybody. So to wrap up here for families with like special needs, neurodivergent children, thinking of traveling can be very daunting. So what is some encouragement that you could give them? I think we're all warriors. Moms are warriors anyway. We're always advocating for our kids, regardless of any, if they're neurodivergent or not, you're already warriors. So my advice is just start. Start with a suggestion that I had of one night, but your warriors and your kids are warriors. They go to school, whether it's homeschool or not, you went on a trip, they tried something new, they tried something different. They're champions. And so celebrate their uniqueness and just start. That's my advice. Yeah, I love that. That's great. And it was a really practical way to do it without feeling like, we have to go to Disney. I don't even want to go to Disney. And it's an hour away from me. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, start, I mean, we do go, but. They're small. <laughs> they're very <Yeah>. small. <laughs> Great practical advice. Thank you so much for coming on today. I've enjoyed our conversation. Thank you, Julie. Welcome. Um, Hey everyone, thanks for listening to today's episode. Hopefully if you have any children with special needs or neurodivergent in any way, this episode has encouraged you to take some small steps to try to add traveling into your lives. I know I have so enjoyed traveling with my children through the years. So I just wanted to recap today's episode with a few key takeaways. Number one, start small. Ease into traveling by beginning with short local trips and single night hotel stays. This helps both you and your children get comfortable with the travel experience before tackling larger trips. Number two, and I loved this one so much, prepare with social stories. Create a story for your child showing pictures of the trip destination, transportation, and activities to reduce anxiety and present a sense of familiarity. Number three, even on vacation, routine is, routine is key. Establish a vacation routine similar to what your children are used to at home. Balance high energy activities with downtime to avoid sensory overload. Consider special accommodations. Many resorts and travel services like Royal Caribbean Cruises and Beaches Resorts offer special accommodations for families with special needs. Take advantage of these options to make your trip more manageable. And last but not least, empower yourself as a parent. You are already an advocate for your child every day. Extend that advocacy to travel by starting small and celebrating each victory along the way. And just get started. You'll find travel becomes easier with each experience. Thanks for listening. Hey, 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 thanks for watching. If you liked this episode, please heart it down below and make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. Leave a comment and let me know what you learned in today's episode. I'd love to hear from you.